Thanks, Godfrey. And firstly, let me thank Julio for your uh, leadership and also Michelle for yours. Uh, there, um, there's a term inspirational leaders and I think both of you reflect that and one of the ways in which you do that is that whilst everybody else is trying to decide what to do, you guys are out in front leading. So I, I really do appreciate that. How do I work this? So I'm going to focus mainly on resources, but the first thing I'm going to say is I think following the release of WHO guidelines last year, I think we're all on the same page now. We all agree, and there's no argument, what we need to do. You heard it from Julio, you heard it from Michelle. And so what I want to focus on in, in my 10 minutes is what things that the Global Fund can bring to that discussion. So we're now all on the same page. We agree that as soon as somebody is identified HIV positive, they need to start treatment. And so on the on your left, as you look, these are what I think are the, the key things we need to do. We need to identify people much earlier and start them on treatment. We need to leave no one behind. All lives do matter, but certainly we need to focus on some lives more than others. And in this instance, we need to make sure that we don't leave young women and adolescent girls behind, men, particularly older men, in terms of treatment, and key populations. We need to make sure, as, as Michelle said, that we focus and, and, and get that, those 10% within the 90%. As we move, move forward in line with the um, sustainable development goals, we need to strengthen the health systems, both because there are additional infections and uh, diseases coming to the fore, such as Zika, Ebola, but also in order to get to our goals, uh, we will need to have both strengthened health and community systems. And then finally, we need to turn off the tap. We need to turn the tap completely off, which means as well as treatment, we need combination prevention, the biomedical interventions to really make sure that uh, we reach our goals. In the middle box, you can see some of the areas I think we can focus on in order to do this and get to a goal at the end. So then I'm going to present some results to date. I'm going to talk about our commitments and I'm going to talk about thinking outside the box. So this slide shows the trend in AIDS-related deaths from the Global Fund-supported countries. And you can see that with the investments that we've had and with the partnership, the Global Fund is a partnership, with the partnership with countries, with multilaterals, with implementers, we've managed to avert 10.6 million deaths over the lifetime of the Global Fund. You can see that of the 40 or so billion dollars which has been signed in the Global Fund, uh, over half of that is assigned to HIV. And as coined by uh, a colleague of mine, we go fishing where the fish are. So m m m majority of the money is for HIV and the majority of that is targeted in sub-Saharan Africa, bearing in mind that there are also uh, important epidemics elsewhere in the world. Hopefully you can see uh, the disbursements by principal recipient type. As I mentioned, we predominantly work through countries, country ownership. So the majority of funding is through government, either the Ministry of Health or Ministry of Finance. You can see particularly uh, related to challenging operating environments where we need to use uh, multilaterals of PRs. And in a significant proportion, 16%, it goes to support NGOs, faith-based faith organizations, and other critical elements of the response. So these are the headline results from July uh, this, this year. I'm, I'm grateful to my colleagues who sent these to me last night. You can see that our contribution uh, to people currently on antiretroviral therapy is 9.2 million. And you can see, the, in the interest of time, I won't go through the other figures, but you can see the other critical figures uh, that of, of our headline HIV results. I would just point out the number of HIV tested in counseling encounters, 509 million. This, this is cumulative. The treatment figure is, is not cumulative. It's current people on treatment. And I think testing is one of the areas where we need to get much smarter and much innovative much more innovative in, in terms of identifying, targeting testing and identifying and providing services to both those who are positive and also those who are negative, who are high risk of becoming positive and providing prevention interventions. 
In terms of global financing, for HIV, the Global Fund supports about a quarter of international finances. Obviously, the pie is much bigger than that. And one of the things that was mentioned by Michelle is the increasing in domestic finances. Now, we recognize this. And let me say, as Michelle said, that we do need more money. Let's all be clear about that. We, 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 there's money available for HIV, but to, in order to reach the end goals, we have to be clear that, um, uh, that mutual accountability means that those that have more need to, need, need, need to continue to support. Have they, have they have done for many years the AIDS response? But you can see on the panel on, on your left the increase in domestic resources uh, that has gone over the last few years. Now, in terms of moving on and focusing down on HIV treatment and prevention, there's often this debate about treatment versus prevention, but it's treatment and prevention. And as we've heard and as we continue to hear, HIV treatment is probably one of the most effective uh, prevention interventions. But I'm often, often asked, how much does the Global Fund fund treatment compared to pre prevention? So I'm going to share, share some slides with you. I would say that this data is, is illustrative and, and, and is still being refined. So please uh, review it with caution. Overall, over the lifetime of Global Fund, about a quarter of, of, uh, our, in, of our funding goes to, goes to treatment. And uh, uh, about, a, about a third goes to treatment and just over 30% uh, uh, sorry, let me say that again. Just over 30% goes to treatment and about a quarter goes to prevention. But when you look over a period of time, this is a pre prevention budget uh, over time in terms of disbursements. You can see, although the overall absolute amount of funding for prevention has gone up, the, the blue bar, which is prevention excluding testing and counselling and PMTCT, has gone down gradually over time. There's a very many reasons for this, and I can go into these in the discussion if we have time. You can see overall the prevention, uh, the allocation for treatment has slowly increased. Um, in 2014, roughly 50% uh, uh, to 70% was, was of, of global fund funds was allocated to treatment. But this is not just ARVs, this is the whole of the treatment program. Okay. So, moving on then, the Global Fund Commitments to End the Epidemic. This is our strategy, and if you remember those six boxes that I showed at the beginning, these map onto our, st our next strategy, so maximising the impact of HIV, tuberculosis and, and malaria by adopting a differentiated approach to, to interventions, working with partners, building strong and sustainable health systems. The community aspects, the health human rights aspects and the aspects related to gender equality as I, as I mentioned earlier so we, we have to focus in certain areas young women and adolescent girls account for 75 percent of new infections and i'm sure we'll hear a lot about that at this co conference and then finally the strategic en uh, enablers to help us do this both the innov innovation, and we'll hear a lot about that, and the differentiation in terms of our response, working with partners and, and implementers at country level. So then, quickly, um, I can't do this talk without talking about the, uh, our global fund re replenishment. We've uh, done a calculation, a, a business case, which after 13 billion, based on our assumption of reducing the, 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 the epidemic within 80% of, 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 of uh, the fast track uh, targets. And you can, see, you, can, you can see there that the global, the global plan and the, the, errors, uh, the error bars in, in terms of the global fund um, uh, calculation for, 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 for funding. Okay. So as I was putting the talk uh, together about 1990, I was reminded of, a, of, of another set of 90s, which was the, the 90s when everybody was a little bit nicer to each other. And there were, if you were in a club, there used to be this dance, which we used to go big box and little box. So the big box is the uh, amount of global resource needs, which we've heard, is much more than uh, we actually have. And one of the ways in which we can 
one of the ways in which we can maximize the resources that we have, bearing in mind we do need more resources, is to focus on implementation efficiencies and smart practices to, to give us uh, more uh, bung for the buck, if I can use that term. So I'm going to spend the last part of my talk pulling out some of this. There's a session hosted by UnitAid and EGPAF on Tuesday evening, which is focus on innovation, I do uh, commend you all to, to, to move to that. So we're in the era of moving from the what, and we're really grateful, as uh, people have said, to WHO for their fantastic work they do on the guidelines. So we're now very clear about the what. We need to focus so much more on the implementation, the how. And many countries now are developing guidance and, and, and recommendations in terms of how to implement implement things efficiently. There are various um, areas where we can find efficiencies. Just summary slide from World Bank highlights some of them. For the interest of time, I won't go into it. But just to say, many uh, partners are involved in, in this work. And from our side, we, we over the last uh, 18 months to two years, be, we've been working with PEPFAR, with Gates, with the IES to look at uh, the potential impact of differentiated models of care in, in order to uh, identify efficiencies. So you can see between 10 and 20 percent uh, savings on, on service costs if you, if you implement various different models of, of differentiated care. There are other areas where we need to innovate. This is a complicated slide. If you just focus in the, in the middle, I, uh, it, where, the, where the pink box is, you can see there you, we need to I innovate and find focus around uh, um, uh, procurement and supply chain, around program quality, and for the Global Fund internally, around risk management and, uh, and the way in which we do business internally. We have an innovation hub within the Global Fund which tries to take ideas which are generated, and just to say that many of these ideas occur uh, within a facility level, at, at, at country level, by, by you guys in this room. So it's about identifying innovative and innovative approaches and scaling them up in order to get uh, efficiencies and impact and health and improvements and health outcomes. Okay, I, I'm almost finished. So, uh, I, I started by talking about resources. Um, I'm going to end by talking about resources. We're, as Julio and others said, we're very clear about what we need to do. Um, I would say a big part of that is investing and in, in supporting the Global Fund. And we've done some analysis, so let me end with, a, with an advert to support the replenishment. We've done an analysis about if you invest $100 million in the Global Fund, what, what you get out of it. And you can see the figures there, but the, the one that I would highlight is, uh, are the, the infections averted, the additional leverage of domestic resources, which is critical, and the long-term economic gains for rolling out uh, combination treatment and prevention. So let me stop there. Let me thank you for listening to me, opportunity to talk. Um, thanks. <laughs>